Now in this lecture, I'm gonna go through all the terminology that's required in order to know what CSS grids are all about and to follow any explanations on the specification. Don't worry, it's not too much terminology, but it's just required in order to be able to really talk about CSS grids. So first of all, there are grid lines. A grid line can be either a horizontal line like here, or it can be a vertical line, therefore separating all the columns in the grid. So the grid lines are basically all the lines that you would end up drawing if you were to draw your grid on a piece of paper. And now with the grid lines defined, we can also define what a grid track is because it's defined as the area between two grid lines. So effectively, a grid track is gonna be one or more rows or columns. So in this case here, you can see that the grid track here is just a row in the grid. It might also be a column, it could also be two rows, but it's just the area between two grid lines. So similarly, this might also be a column here if we're talking about a vertical grid track. And so then next, we also have grid cells, which are areas separated by four grid lines and they are the smallest unit you have in a grid. So essentially it's just the same thing as you would normally refer to when you're talking about a grid cell. So the same thing as a grid cell in Excel, for instance. Now, apart from the grid cell, there's also the more general grid area. So this is also part of the grid that's defined by four grid lines that surround it. And it can be used later on to arrange elements on the grid. So this is gonna be a very powerful tool and you can see this as a generalization of a grid cell, which is also a grid area, but the smallest grid area you can have, so just one cell. Now lastly, all we're gonna to have to talk about is a grid container and grid items. So the grid container is just gonna be the whole grid that contains all the grid cells, and a grid item can be any element that you place inside the grid. Like for instance here, we have one grid item that spans just one cell, and similarly, you can also have grid items spanning multiple rows or columns, like here, for instance, spanning two columns. So it's gonna be a very flexible tool to lay out your elements on the grid in whatever way you like. And now with this, you also already have all the terminology you need in order to understand any blog articles or anything I talk about in this course and anything that's related to CSS grids. So with this, we're now ready to move on and really dive into how to use CSS grids.